Hi guys, how are you? In this video, we are going to talk about the stability of conformations. And don't be alarmed by this guy in the picture here. He is a confused soul and we are not going to be like him. So before we proceed, take a look at this diagram. In the previous video, we have seen how to draw the Newman projections. So what we decided was that there is a carbon atom present here and then a carbon atom uh, is represented by this circle and these lines show the other connections with the atoms and there will be some groups present here group 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 etc so this is the first type of structure now if i rotate this by 60 degree the back circle the back carbon then it takes this form and here one group is behind the other group and this is a congested position right if you rotate it by 60 degree again then it gets converted once again to the first form right it might be possible that these groups are different anyway so what do we call these two positions when they are far apart we call it a staggered position all right when the groups are far apart it is called staggered and when there is a group behind other group that is there is congestion it is called the eclipsed position the name is fitting because this front group is eclipsing the group behind so this is the eclipsed position so there are two formations a conformer can take one is the staggered position and the other is eclipsed position and due to rotation these two conformations keep converting into one another now if you have your own space you will be more than happy right so most of the time it is found that staggered configuration is more stable than the eclipsed conformation because there is a crowding present here and nobody likes to be in a crowd okay so usually staggered will be more stable than eclipsed position so the energy of eclipsed form is more than the staggered form why because it is less stable okay but there is more to conformations than just stating staggered and eclipsed let's see what with an example of normal butane normal butane has four carbon atoms and it is represented by this formula so the first thing that i am going to do is draw the newman projection of normal butane so we will draw it from this bond the carbon 2 and carbon 3 bond okay so i'll call this the front carbon this will become the front carbon and this will become the back carbon right so let's draw the Newman projection. So on the front carbon, I have three groups. There are two hydrogen atoms, H, H, and one CH3 group. Okay. Now on the back carbon atom also, I have three groups. There are two hydrogen atoms once again. And then there is a CH3 group. So this is the Newman projection for normal butane. Now take a look at this conformation. All the groups are far apart. So this is a staggered form, right? What if I rotate the back carbon by 60 degree? I will get something like this. So the first carbon will contain two H groups and one CH3. But now due to rotation, the CH3 will come over here. The H will be behind the CH3 and another H will come here. Okay. Now these groups are in front of other groups. So we call this position the eclipsed position. all right now here is the important part because in the first conformation 
the ch3 groups are at the maximum possible distance from each other that is they are as far from each other as they can be so we call this position as the anti staggered position you cannot put ch3 any further from the other ch3 okay so this is called anti staggered similarly if you look at structure 2 this hydrogen atom will completely hide the hydrogen atom on the back but what about this h it will not be able to eclipse the ch3 group completely because it is bigger so this eclipsed form is called partially eclipsed because the group on the back carbon is not completely hidden by the group on the front carbon so what happens if i rotate this back carbon by 60 degree once more you will once again get a staggered form but let's take a look at what groups will be present where so on the first carbon i have a ch3 here and then an h and h here now let's take a look back once again this ch3 will come at this position this h will come here and this h will be coming on the top so what i have is one h is present here ch3 is present here and another h is present here so this is a staggered form because all the groups are far apart but in which ch3 groups are close together so there will be some crowding so this is a staggered form but not an anti staggered form this is known as gauch or gauche staggered form because these ch3 groups will have some crowding right let's rotate it once more we will once again get an eclipsed form but let's see what happens this time you have a ch3 here an h and h here and now you will have a ch3 coming here and h will come here another h will be here now as you can see these h's will be completely eclipsing each other and the ch3 will also completely hide the ch3 group so this is an eclipsed form but here all the groups are completely hiding each other so this is a fully eclipsed form structure number 4 whereas the other one was partially eclipsed because the ch3 was behind h here whereas this ch3 will be completely hidden by the ch3 group so this is called fully eclipsed conformation now tell me what will happen if you rotate it once again you will go from eclipsed to staggered form the first carbon will contain ch3 and two h atoms and on the back carbon in the staggered form the ch3 will come on the left and two hydrogens will be here this is structure number 5 and this is a staggered form now you tell me what is this is this anti no this is gauch staggered form and finally if you rotate it once again you will get another eclipsed form this is structure number 6 and you have ch3 h and h this time the ch3 will come behind this h there will be an h present here and one h present here now take a look at this carefully and you will see that this eclipsed form is partially eclipsed the ch3 will not be completely hidden by the h atom okay now if you rotate it once more by 60 degree the ch3 will come on the top and the h atoms will come on the sides which will be same as the structure number 1 so there are six conformations possible one is the anti staggered form 
then we have a partially eclipsed form from that we move on to the gauche staggered form then the fully eclipsed form then we once again get a gauche staggered form and finally we have the partially eclipsed form again so these six conformations are possible for butane now let's talk about their stability and their energies because in the anti form all the groups are as far away as possible it will be the most stable conformation then you have these gauche forms in which the groups are far apart but they are not as far apart as possible then you have the partially eclipsed forms where there is crowding but not too much of it and finally you have the fully eclipsed or eclipsed form in which there is too much of crowding so since i numbered these structures i can write anti form is more stable than 3 and 5 which are the gauche forms which are more stable than 2 and 6 which are partially eclipsed form and the least stable is number 4 that is the fully eclipsed form you can verify them from these numbers here all right so if we plot an energy diagram for all the conformations of butane we will get something like this so the lowest energy belongs to the anti conformation these two hills are the partially eclipsed conformations okay the gauche forms because they are more stable and this topmost hill which is the highest in energy is for the fully eclipsed form this is the energy diagram right so guys this was all about stability of conformations and the different definitions associated with it if you have any problems with this concept comment below the video and i'll answer those and if you learned something from here subscribe to my channel and spread the word so that i can help more people out there see you in the next video